Well, that's a bummer. Hey guys, I just wanted to make a video on maybe some things you ought to know before you buy a Seaforce 500. First off, in the 200 hour break-in service, um, they recommend that you do a engine valve clearance check. In order to do that, you have to take off the seat. You have to take off all these plastics here. You have to remove the gas tank. Um, pretty sure you have to take this stuff off all down here as well. Because you're basically trying to get to the top of the engine, which sits about right here. Um, in order to take, I believe you have to take the valve cover off um, and check basically how much, I believe it's the up and down movement of the intake and exhaust valves. Um, and you have to check that with some shims. So it's a pretty involved process. Um, for the average guy, it's probably going to take you a few hours, I'd imagine. Um, now I wasn't aware of that when I bought this machine. I bought it used from somebody. Um, so that's something I wish I would have known going into it. Um, so my recommendation to you would be if you're going to buy one of these from a dealer, that you work that into your deal, basically. That if they're, you know, if you're going to buy it from them, that either they do that service for free or you get some sort of discounted price on it. I'd imagine you're probably going to run anywhere from $150 to $250 to do that service. Um, and, and maybe even more if they actually have to change anything to those valves and actually have to do work on it. Um, so it's pretty costly. Uh, and it's also costly for your time if you're going to DIY it. Now I wish I would have known that before I bought this machine. Um, I'm not sure if there's other manufacturers that have that same, um, you know, issue that you have to check the valve clearance. Um, I don't know if you have to do that, for example, on a Yamaha or a Honda or a Polaris or anything like that. So if you do, leave me a comment um, if that's been your experience with another brand having to check the engine valve clearance. Now, another issue I've had was, granted, these are kind of minor issues, but I don't know if they're, you know, signs of things to come. But on a cold morning when we were riding in the mountains, my gauge cluster, for some reason, was malfunctioning. Um, it said that the fuel was empty. Basically, it wouldn't give me a readout on the fuel. Um, as well as the tachometer, or excuse me, not the tachometer, the uh, engine temp wasn't reading as well. Um, so I turned it off and on a few times and it went away. It's kind of a small issue. And the other was um, that same trip, but the next day, the power steering um, wasn't working when I first turned it on. Um, I had to ride around for a bit um, and turn it on and off. And then finally the power steering um, kind of went back to normal. Um, that was on a cold morning. Like I said, these are kind of minor glitches. Another minor issue um, I've kind of noticed is that the radiator, excuse me, the fan on the radiator seems to kick on and off quite a bit. Um, and whenever I'm riding it, it seems like it's always riding. Um, I'll show you here just real quick. It's always riding with basically the bars all the way up and this top bar will turn on and off as the radiator or the fan kicks on and off. Um, but it does it quite often. So I don't know if maybe I have air in my system or I need to purge it or something. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's others that have noticed this as well. Again, I don't know if it's necessarily an issue. It's just something I've noticed. And I guess my biggest issue I've had thus far owning this Seaforce 500 is that I do have a leak here on the rear differential. Um, you can kind of see there between uh, this half shaft and here's the differential here. Uh, you can kind of see that there's a buildup of oil right there. Um, I did wash this, you know, the other day, so uh, I'm sure some of that did come off. Um, I don't know how common this is on other Seaforces. Um, if you have this comp, 
uh, problem as well, leave us a comment, let us know. Uh, so others can know as well before they buy one of these. Um, but I did just pop the uh, fill plug right there off and check the level. And it really hasn't leaked very much at all. So I just topped it off with some gear oil. Um, and there's no, like if you can see, I don't know. There's really no build up or anything down there on the skid plate. So I don't believe it's leaking too much. Um, my guess is there's a seal probably in there that's either faulty or, you know, broken or something. Didn't get put in right from the factory. Um, only has 300 miles, so I wouldn't expect the differential to be leaking already, but uh, it looks like it is. Again, I'm not 100% sure what the issue is. I'm guessing it's a seal, but I'd have to tear into it to really figure it out. Um, and I'm, I don't know how common this issue is on other machines, so it might just be, you know, me, a one-off, or it could be common. Uh, I haven't seen anything on YouTube. I did some searches, and I really didn't find anybody else talking about them, so at least not for the Seaforce 500. But I'll try and keep you posted on this and see if it comes to be an issue. For now, I'm just going to check the levels every so often and just make sure it's not leaking any more than it is. Um, kind of just, you know... <laughs> Uh, see if I can get along with it without having to tear it apart. I'm sure at some point it'll probably need to be fixed. So really this is kind of the main issue I've ran into thus far owning this machine for four months. Um, I thought I'd put this video together just to kind of give you an idea of what my experience has been thus far. Um, just so that you can be informed if you're going to purchase one of these. Um, let us know, leave us a comment. If you've run into similar issues or maybe if you have a different issue, let us know. But overall, it's been good. It's a fun machine to ride. Um, you know, all these things are, depending on who you are, might be minor, might be major, but, um, you know, they're not really deal breakers for me yet anyways. I might, <laughs> I might change my mind later. Um, but I still wouldn't, you know, dissuade you. Is that a word, dissuade? From buying a C Force 500 Gen 2. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like I said, leave us a comment, leave us a like if you found this useful. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Have a good one.